happy to have it everyone and welcome today is june 20th 2020 and i'm going to talk we're going to look at the sanctuary the last furniture the ark of the covenant uh, as you can see on your screen the ark of the testimony is also called the ark of the covenant it's also called the ark of the testament and the Ark of the Lord. And we've been looking at the sanctuary message. And we looked at the, ark, the altar of sacrifice, the laver, the showbread, the candlestick, altar of incense. And now we are at the last one, the Ark of the Covenant. And so it is, uh, we have gotten to the last furniture. And so today we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, I'm going to actually read from the Bible this time in the book of Exodus chapter 25 verse 16 and it says and thou shalt put and God said to Moses thou shalt put into the ark the, the testimony which I shall be, uh, I will give thee and so where is the testimony found the testimony is found in the ark and so it is found in the ark and if you're looking at right here you can see the ark is this case and in it is the testimony but um when it comes to the testimony what is the testimony well if you go one book one chapter previous one chapter before one chapter back we're gonna see it says in the book of in in chapter 20 in chapter 24 verse 12 and the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And so what happens is God is giving up giving Moses a law. Alright? He gave Moses a law and 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 he is telling him that you're going to use and put it into the ark. Now, how do we know that the law is still here? How do, you know it is in the, how do we know it is in God's presence? Well, if you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 19, it says this. John says, in the, book of, in, the book of, in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 19, John says, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony, testament. And, and there were lightnings, earthquakes, and things like that. Now, the ark, the, the, it was seen in the ark, the testament. The testament, also called testimony, right the death of the also called testimony and i'm going to say the testimony are is actually the ten commandments of god that he gives to us not that there's the ten commandments in heaven but that's the ten commandments that he had given us as he spelled out to us his law and um how do we know that the testimony or the testaments are God's commandments. Well, if you go over into Exodus chapter 31 from verse number 13 to verse number 18. I'm not going to read everything, but I'm going to read you the most important part. In verse number 18, it says, and please read the whole chapter to give the context. But verse 18 says, And he, meaning God, gave more unto Moses when he had made co an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai. And so on Mount Sinai, God was with Moses for 40 days and 40 nights. On Mount Sinai, God gave Moses two tables of testimony tables of stone written with the finger of God. Interestingly, in Exodus 24 verse 12, 
the Bible says, God, God says to Moses, I will give thee tables of stone and the law and the commandment which I have written. And so there is no doubt that the testimony of God is basically the Ten Commandments, the table of stones that he gave to Moses. Now, not just that. Let's go back to that chapter again, 11 verse 19. You see, I'm going to explain to you the term that we use for this channel called Open Veil TV. When you go in the sanctuary from here, the altar of offering and the labor, you pass this part right here, which is the first veil, to enter the to enter the holy place. And once you go to the showbread, candlesticks, incense, then there's a second veil and you enter the most holy place. Now, what is the why is this channel called Open Veil TV? And it is because of this veil that was opened. Now if you look at when Jesus Christ died upon the cross, this veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom and so that was already opened well we actually well, actually it wasn't even open it was shredded it was torn but here that one was open that one that's that's how John could see the arc of the testimony that was open and that's why we have the term open veil TV so the veil was open open veil TV now and so so far we've talked about the sanctuary it's also called the temple it's also called the tabernacle of God now how do we know that those commandments are still binding today well if you read in the book of um, Exodus chapter 25 verse 9 it says according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all that instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And so everything that God gave to Moses was a pattern of what was in heaven. And again, in chapter in verse 40, it also says, And look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee on the mount. So yes, the pattern that God gave to Moses is in heaven and so there is no way that God's law is abolished because it is still in heaven so so far about God's commandment um, we, 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 we looked at uh, just in a short time what it is about and so now we're going to start to look at more present applications soon and uh, see what it is about. And so uh, I'm making this video because on the first video I made, for some reason the mic was off and nothing was, uh, was coming out. And so I wanted to make that before and then to finish the rest you can have to look at the other video. I think it's from, from 13 minutes it's gonna start where, where you can hear what I'm saying. Until then, bye and I hope you also watch the other videos. And so God's commandment is still here binding on earth. I'm gonna change um, my um, audio just for, for the time. And so, what happens is, when people are, are proclaiming that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he, he abolished the law. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. Now, now, if you look at the ark, if you look at the ark, there is another ark presented in the Bible called the Ark of Noah. And that, we're going to look at it last, okay? We're going to look at that one last because I, I, I'm going to end with this one. Now, excuse me. 
What is it about? We can find out today in this arc. Well, not the arc, but let's actually look at some other things we can we can read for the moment. Oh, that's not right. Yes, that's the one. Let me see right here. In his word, I'm reading from Review and Herald, November 27, 1883. In his word, God has revealed seven truths. Seven truths. As a people, we should be earnest students of prophecy. We should not rest until we become intelligent in regard to the subject of the sanctuary. Right now we are studying the sanctuary, right? Are we not? Yes, we are now studying the sanctuary, right? Which is brought, which is brought out in the visions of Daniel and John. This subject sheds light on our present position and work and gives us unmistakable proof that God has led us in our past experience. It explains our disappointment in 1844, showing us that the sanctuary to be cleansed was not the earth, as we had supposed, but that Christ then entered into the most holy apartment of the heavenly sanctuary and is there performing the closing work of his priestly office in fulfillment of the words of the angels to the prophet Daniel unto 2000. In 300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And so now, what we are doing is, since we are studying the sanctuary, we, when we're done with the sanctuary, we're going to look at the book of Daniel and see what it is presenting to us in this book. Now, question is, why, why did God leave the law for the last so remember um when I, god was as god was living was leading the israelites out of egypt he led them through the sanctuary and i'm gonna show you next video god's willing how he was leading them through the sanctuary but at the end he gave them the commandment last well we have to know the command the ark of the covenant is the last item in the sanctuary message and so he has to give it last not just that there's another thing if god had given them the commandment first then it wouldn't be it wouldn't um, support its values because if you first start with okay here's the commandment the people would think it's you're just like a set of rule and then you become very didact didactic and so they might become very belligerent towards your towards your, your rule and here Romans chapter 8 6 to 8 says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And so if God had given them the commandment first, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. He had to show them his care for them, his love for them, and then say, okay, you know, because, you know, I love you. This is how this relationship is going to work. But if he start just from the beginning, okay, here are the rules. And you need to obey them then they will more likely not want to be around god anymore and so that's the key thing now we need to start talking about present application you know and so present application of this usa today so um we have a we have a gay couple that ask to punish a defiant clerk Maybe you guys have known this, maybe you didn't know that. 
But when when Obama um, decided when Obama decided to legalize homosexuality, and there were two couples that wanted to get married, and they say that um, when they asked the clerk for a wedding for a wedding uh, certificate, her Miss Davis, she denies it. And so let's see. So, defying the Supreme Court, a county clerk says she was acting under God's authority Tuesday while continuing to deny marriage licenses to gay couples whose lawyers asked a federal judge to hold her in contempt of court. The Supreme Court refused Monday to allow Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis' office to deny the licenses because of her religious beliefs. However, on Tuesday morning, she turned away at least four couples and she says this to issue a marriage license which conflicts with god's definition of marriage with my name affixed to that certificate would violate my conscience she said later on she said it is not a light issue for me it is a heaven and hell decision for me it is a decision of obedience first of all is this any marriage that is done outside of God's definition of marriage is not a marriage. <laughs> so, let's talk about it. Who created marriage? Is it men or is it God? It's God. So, who defines what marriage is? Is it men or God? It is God. And so, if God says marriage is between men and women, and you got two men or two women trying to get married, it is not a marriage because it doesn't go with the definition. For instance, if I say, um, if I decide to, uh, let's say I want to change the definition of cloud network, you know, um, Oracle cloud inf uh, infrastructure, Amazon cloud and thing, or IBM cloud and OneDrive. If I decide to, to make something different and say, oh, this is the cloud. But then it doesn't go with the definition of the cloud system, then it is not a cloud. Right? It's something different. And here, because it doesn't go with God's definition of marriage of a man and a woman, it is not marriage, actually. And so, in the sense, she cannot give them any license because that, that's not a marriage. Right? It's not marriage, anyways. So they don't need a marriage license because that is not the definition of marriage. So that actually is uh, something to keep in mind. Now, we as a, me as a Seventh-day Adventist, I will say uh, we have a purpose on this planet and it's to, and it's, and it's to um, enlighten people. To not fall into deception of uh, of this of Satan, and Satan primarily uses um, some people or system or denominations, and it could be also one of our people, and so and this is for people to know. So here, through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. And so, remember in the law of God, there is a commandment called the Sabbath commandment. But Satan is trying to push Sunday observance, to make Sunday sacred, but which he can't make it holy. And he's trying to push this because he hates God's seventh day Sabbath, which is today, actually, is God's seventh day Sabbath, commonly now called Saturday. And if you have a question about whether it is true or not, please put it on the comment below. And that way I can answer those questions that you may have. And so, while the formula lays the foundation for spiritualism, which is immortality of the soul, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. And so, Rome, not just Rome, but is, she's talking about the Roman Catholic system or the papacy. Which has, which has its seat in Rome. Uh, 
because that's Satan's primary agent. It is the system of the papacy that he uses to entice people into disbelieving in God and to reject God's commandment. The Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with Roman power. And under this and under the influence of this threefold union, this country, the US, will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. Actually, they would not just see that right here on her as they are trying to force her conscience. So are we getting somewhere already? Yes. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be between you and God. If Are you going to go with your conscience? Or are we going to go with what they say? You're going to have to choose. And so, there they are already starting to trump, to trump, to trample on the right of people's conscience. One, by legalizing homosexuality and thinking that it can be called marriage. But it is not a marriage anyways. Now. Question is this. Oh no. I forgot that one. I need. Yes. I need that one. For sure. And so. Here's the question. Who are seven the Adventists? Um, I am one of them. But who are we? You see this one right here? This one right here, they are all Catholic. Some of them are Jesuits. And they are just people that come and sit on the pews. They are information people, influential people. And let, let them tell you who Seventh-day Adventists are. People like me. Let's see what they say about us. So, who are Seventh-day Adventists? One first point, Seventh-day Adventism cannot change its views on the Catholic Church being the whole of Babylon, Babylon without admitting that it was wrong on Sunday worship. Now, first thing is, we don't we don't go against we don't go against Catholic the Catholic Church. We go against the Catholic system or the teaching of the Church, not the Church because the Church is the people. We go against the teaching. We don't change our views on the teaching of the church. Not the church itself. Not the because the church is the people. The teaching. Because they as you're gonna see in the future, they are gonna the the Catholic the the papacy boast about the change of the solemnity of the Sabbath to Sunday, which is not biblical. It, Seventh Adventism, cannot admit that Sunday worship is not the mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. Interestingly enough, they like to use that false allegation of Jewish Sabbath as if the Jews had created the Sabbath. No, it is not the Sabbath of the Jews, it is God's Sabbath. Throughout the whole Bible, you will not find one place where it says the Sabbath of the Jews or the Jewish Sabbath. It is always says that it is the Sabbath of the Lord. The Sabbath of the Lord. Exodus 20 verse 8 to 11. Uh, Isaiah chapter 58 verse 13 and 14. Uh, Mark chapter 2 verse 27, 28. And... Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 3, it is the Lord's Sabbath, not the Jewish Sabbath, the Lord's Sabbath. So here, they are actually bringing falsehood. You see, they are bringing some truth with falsehood. That's fellish, that, that is very fallacious uh, thinking or teaching right here. Very deceptive. And yes, Sunday worship by law is the mark of the beast. 
if you read in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and chapter 14, you're going to see it. What does it say Sunday where he's talking about the mark of the beast, which is against the seal of God. And so you're going to find out. In 3, 3, Seventh-day Adventism cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be Seventh-day Adventism. Interesting. We are not anti-Catholic. We are anti-Catholic teachings. <laughs> That's the see people don't understand the difference between teaching and the people or the church. We are not anti Catholic, we are anti Catholic teaching. It is the same way we are anti anyone who is teaching, no, not anyone, we are anti any teachings of anyone that goes against the Bible. Even within Seventh Day Adventism, like right now we have that um, we have a lot of um, dispute about certain topics that the Bible clearly says not to do, and yet people are trying to do it, and that I'm also against that too. Even even with my people, Seventh Day Adventists, we have struggles, and some of us wants to stay true to the Bible, and some are trying to deviate so they can be uh, in peace with the world or with Satan in a sense and so no we are not anti anybody we are anti teachings that contradict the Bible that are going to go against the Bible that's the idea and that's who we are as Seventh-day Adventists let's move on now as I mentioned about Sunday worship well let's start to get into more deep uh, Sunday worship now. North Dakota House shoots down bill ending blue laws in the revival floor debate. And this guy right here, his name is um, Ertlet, Sebastian Ertlet. There was a bill trying to um, either to um, there was a bill they were trying to, to place to know if they could uh, leave people to go to work on Sunday and do all their activities on Sunday and things like that or whether Sunday should become a day of worship or not which is not anyways but he said this I also rise in opposition to this bill I think that governments generally have taken enough steps and individuals on their own accord to push God out of their lives and I do not think that we need to take one more step. And the need to worship on Sunday is actually a right of God's. Okay. He is right. Here. He is right. It's a right of God's. Not the God of heaven. God's. So those false gods. Or Satan worship. That's true. On his part. And we ought to adhere to that right that he has. Okay. First of all, he is confused now. He says God, now he says he, no my friend, it's they have. Because my God doesn't care about Sunday worship like that. He cares about the seven day Sabbath. There are exceptions as it was mentioned in previous comments. No, there is no exception into keeping God's Sabbath. Huh. You can see it is not a true day, it's a false day of worship. Because God doesn't give any exception. To whatever job you have, do not work on the Sabbath. Keep it holy. No exception. There are, there are exceptions as it was mentioned in previous comments here and there. Is testimony on behalf of those call statements who won't do time as well. Anyhow, I urge you all to support the third commandment and to vote no on the bill. So, let's actually see. We're going to see. Interestingly, I wonder what the third commandment say. Hmm. 